Chapter 20 The First Resurrection Revelation 20 verse 1 And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. An angel come down from heaven, this angel came down on his own instead of falling down. This implies that he was a good angel. This angel in verse 1 is probably the fifth angel mentioned in Revelation chapter 3, because the fifth angel is the angel that had the key of the pit originally in Revelation 9 verse 1. The fifth angel is the angel of the church of Sardis. The key of the pit, the key opens the pit, not hell, or the lake of fire. This is to be Satan's place of confinement for the next thousand years. This key is first mentioned in Revelation 9 verse 1. A great chain, Satan is also bound with some sort of supernatural chain, for a thousand years. He will be released then, to fight against God's anointed again after that time. Revelation 20 verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. The dragon, Psalm 91 verse 13, Isaiah 27 verse 1, Revelation 12 verses 3 and 4, 7, 9, 13, 16, 17, 13, colon 2, 4, 11, and 16, 13. That old serpent, Revelation 12 verse 9. The devil, used five two times in the New Testament. Satan, this title is used 56 times, and bound him, the supernatural chain enabled the fifth angel to bind Satan, without it the fifth angel did not stand a chance. A thousand years, there is going to be a thousand year period in the future that will be ruled by Christ. Satan will not be able to deceive the nations during this time. Today, he has the nations of this world deceived, because he is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Revelation 20 verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season, and cast him into the pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him. We know from earlier scriptures that the pit had a key to it. The fifth angel had the key to the pit, but now a seal is set upon Satan himself, a seal from God, that only he could open. Isaiah 24 verses 21 to 22, And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together, as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. After many days shall they be visited, the host of the high ones will be released, for a season with Satan, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. For one thousand years, Christ will rule over the Gentiles, with a rod of iron. And after that he must be loosed a little season, during this little season Satan gets much of the Gentile world to come against God, and those who do are destroyed and cast into the lake of fire forever. This will be mankind's last test to see how every nation, under a perfect world government, with priests sent out to them will respond to the rule of God on the earth. They will fail miserably according to scripture, and prove that mankind needs God regardless of what environment they are in. They cannot do it on their own not even when they had 1,000 years without Satan's influence, to corrupt them. It will only take a short season for Satan to get the masses to follow him at that time, and the masses will be destroyed. Revelation 20 verse 4 And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Here we see the fulfillment of a promise made by Jesus to his twelve disciples that they would sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel in Matthew 19 verse 28. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God. This was during the tribulation period, because the body lies in the grave awaiting the resurrection, when the body and soul will be reunited together in immortality. It is the tribulation saints that have victory over the mark of the beast, that reign with Christ, and live with him here on earth for a thousand years. These are the overcomers mentioned there. Revelations 2.26, which had not worshipped the beast, the Antichrist. Revelation 20 verse 5, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished they will be a part of the second death mentioned below. The first resurrection, this resurrection is for all the saints from Adam unto the little flock, 
This also will be for the martyrs during the tribulation period. The lost will await their judgment after Satan has been defeated permanently at the end of the kingdom at the great white throne judgment. Revelation 20 verse 11. Revelation 20 verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. On such the second death hath no power. The lake of fire hell and death are cast into the lake of fire. The second death cannot touch anyone involved in the first resurrection. Revelation 2 11, 20 colon 1 4 and 21 colon 8. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. These tribulation saints will reign with Christ in the kingdom as priests along with all of righteous Israel that believed under the law program, who are also resurrected at this time. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. This includes the twelve apostles to the nation of Israel. They were not apostles to the body of Christ, Paul was, as the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Revelation 20 verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. When the thousand years are expired, this is mentioned six times in relationship to the kingdom. The world is roughly six thousand years old, because the Bible says so. It backs it up with dates and ages from Adam all the way to Christ equaling four thousand years exactly. And since there have been two thousand years since then, you come up with six thousand years roughly since creation until now with the millennium of rest which is soon to come. Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. His prison is also called the bottomless pit. Isaiah 24 verses 21 to 22 above. Revelation 20 verse 8 And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. The Gentiles spend a thousand years under the reign of Christ, with his government set up on the earth, and Israel is serving as the kingdom of priests. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. But at the end of the thousand years of Christ reigning on the earth in perfect righteousness, with Satan and his influence non-existent for all those years, the Gentiles will be faced with a test at that time. Unfortunately, many will fail and choose to follow Satan at that time, and they will be destroyed. How many of them? The number of whom is as the sand of the sea, Gog, and Magog, the scripture says that Gog and Magog are the nations in the four corners of the earth, not two cities in Russia. Ezekiel 38,1-39,11 Revelation 20 verse 9 And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. They went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints. Ezekiel 38 verse 22 And I will plead against him with pestilence, and with blood and I will reign upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. The beloved city, the beloved city of Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. 2 Kings 1 verses 10 to 14, And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven, and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. Again, also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven, and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up, and came and fell on his knees before Elijah, and besought him, and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life, and the life of these fifty thy servants, be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down, from heaven, and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties, therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. Revelation 20 verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. The lake of fire and brimstone, first mentioned in the previous chapter as a lake of fire, 
It now becomes known as the lake of fire and brimstone. Being cast into the lake of fire is called the second death. Verse 14 below, where the beast and the false prophet are, they were not destroyed when they were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. They, along with the devil, are going to be in their day and night, forever and ever tormented. The beast is the Antichrist, the great white throne judgment. Revelation 20 verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. A great white throne, this is the final judgment for the lost. We are judged at the judgment seat of Christ immediately after the rapture. This judgment occurs at the end of the millennial kingdom. Psalm 102 verses 25 to 26 Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yeah, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. Isaiah 34 verse 4 And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. And there was found no place for them, 2 Peter 3. Revelation 20 verse 12 And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. The books were opened, not just one book, but books. People at the great white throne judgment are judged according to their works. Lost people from the dispensation of grace will be there as well to be judged. There are the people there that are from the kingdom as well as those that are lost throughout all ages. All people that appear at the judgment seat of Christ are saved and will be judged for their works that they have done in his body and for the motives behind them for rewards. There will not be a soul cast into hell at that judgment, because that judgment seat of Christ is for believers. Only, what is also true is that there will be both saved and lost people judged at the great white throne judgment, because they will not be sent back into time to be judged with the church at the judgment seat of Christ, but must stand before the judge of the universe as all others. Unfortunately, the vast majority of attendees at the great white throne will be lost. The book of life will be opened, and those saved in the kingdom will find their names written there. And another book was opened. Under Israel's law program, a person could have their name blotted out of the book of life as seen in Revelation 3 verse 5. Also Exodus 32 verses 32 to 33, Deuteronomy 9 verse 14 and 29 colon 20. Exodus 32 verses 32 to 33, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Deuteronomy 9 verse 14 Let me alone, that I may destroy them, and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. Deuteronomy 29 verse 20 The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. The book of life is described by its full name in Revelation 13 verse 8, where John calls it the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In this verse, and in the one found in Revelation 17 verse 8, it mentions the ones who worshipped the beast and who had received his mark. They both say that their names were not written in the book of life. That is because they had been blotted out in accordance with violating Revelations 3 5. The book of life is also mentioned by Paul of two men who helped Paul in Philippians 4 verse 3 who were a part of Israel's kingdom program. They assisted Paul, because Israel's prophecy program had been put on hold due to Israel's diminishing and her fall, because of unbelief. Accord to their works, the deeds that they have done, whether they were the works of Christ, or their own works. Revelation 20 verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, here both death, and hell sound like a place, and in Revelation 6 verse 8 death is personified as a person. Proverbs 5 colon 5, 7 27, Isaiah 28 verse 15, and Revelation 1 verse 8 tells us that there are keys to both death and hell. Proverbs 5 verse 5, her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Proverbs 7 verse 27, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Isaiah 28 verse 15, Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, 
and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Revelation 1 verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. They were judged every man according to their works. There is a judgment of works for the lost to determine the extent of their punishment in the lake of fire, while it will be eternal in its length. It will vary in its intensity for the worst sinners. Revelation 20 verse 14 And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Death and hell. No one who was saved in any age will experience this second death. Those inhabitants of hell will get a new permanent dwelling place in the lake of fire. Hell is only a temporary dwelling place until the last rejecter of God's Son breathes his final breath. Hell is located in the center of the earth. The lake of fire. Its location is unknown. The second death being thrown into the lake of fire forever. Revelation 20 verse 15 And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The book of life, no person saved during the church age or during the tribulation period will be judged on this day, for they will have already been judged. Philippians 4 verse 3 And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Revelation 3 verse 5, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, and before his angels. Revelation 13 verse 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 17 verse 8, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Revelation 20 verse 12 And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Revelation 21 verse 27 And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or mocketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 22 verse 19 And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. People in the dispensation of grace today do not have their names in the book of life, because it is not for the body of Christ. We already have eternal life indwelling us the moment we got saved. Heaven and earth will be recreated possibly at the same time this judgment is occurring. Then once it is over, the believers in the kingdom program will return to a new earth. The Lake of Fire, Revelation 19 20, 20 10, and 14. Chapter 21, A New Heaven and a New Earth. Revelation 21 verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. A new heaven and a new earth, a new heaven, and our earth are going to be created by God after the millennial reign of Christ, because of the effects of sin in both realms. Satan sinned in the heavens, and he led one-third of the angels to rebel in the heavens, and they are there currently awaiting their eviction. 2 Peter 3 verses 7 to 13. This will occur at the midpoint of the tribulation period, when God shakes the heavens and casts them out. Revelation 12 verses 3 to 4. Mankind sinned on the earth in the garden when the serpent tricked even Genesis 2, and the earth was cursed along with mankind. God will remove any effect of Satan's and man's sin from every corner of the universe. The millennial kingdom has ended at this point, and the eternal kingdom now begins with none of the effects of the fall, because there is a new heaven and a new earth. Sin has been done away with, and there was no more sea. God does not need the seas anymore to separate mankind from killing one another in the new earth. God divided the lands back in the days of Peleg. Genesis 10 verse 25 And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg. For in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Revelation 21 verse 2 And first John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The holy city, New Jerusalem, it comes down from God out of heaven after the kingdom is over, and the new heaven and new earth are created. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, the city is identified as the bride later on in this chapter. Nowhere in scripture is the church, which is Christ's body, ever called the bride of Christ. This is a man-made doctrine that permeates Christendom. When Jesus said he was going to prepare a place for them, 
he was speaking to the believing remnant of Jews about the city of New Jerusalem. John 14 verse 2. He also said in John 14 verse 3 that when he returns, he would receive them unto himself in that city. Isaiah 62. Revelation 21 verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. The tabernacle of God, this is fulfilled, not upon the death of a believer today, nor after the tribulation, or even during the kingdom, but in eternity future. He will dwell with them, Emmanuel. Matthew 1 verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, God with us. They shall be his people. Hosea 2 verse 23, And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy, and I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Revelation 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. It is at this time in the distant future that God wipes away all tears from their eyes. In eternity future without sin and death, there will be no reason for sorrow of any kind. There shall be no more death, because sin has been dealt with. Nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be no more pain. Pain is a result of fallen man. The former things are passed away. Sin is the cause of all these things. And when it is gone, the need to cry will be gone as well. Revelation 21 verse 5 And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. I make all things new, a new heaven, and a new earth. Revelation 21 verse 1 Revelation 21 verse 6 And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I am the Alpha and Omega. This is defined in the next five words, the beginning and the end. The fountain of the water of life. Remember these words are not for the church in the dispensation of grace. They are for the tribulation saints who are not sealed with eternal life by the Holy Spirit as we are today. John 7 verse 38, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ephesians 4 verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Revelation 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He that overcometh, this phrase is used in each of the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia. An overcomer is defined for us in 1 John 5 verses 4 to 5 as someone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God during that time when the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is not at hand today in the dispensation of grace. Inherit all things, 1 Peter 4 verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand, be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. Revelation 21 verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Revelation 21 verse 8, But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, the lake of fire. The second death, this is being cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Revelation 20 verse 6. Revelation 21 verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the lamb's wife. One of the seven angels. This angel was one of the seven angels that were messengers to the seven churches in Asia. Revelation 1 verses 16 and 20, and chapters 2 and 3. The seven vials, they were poured out already. Revelation 16 verse 7. The bride, the lamb's wife. Notice again, the bride of the lamb is called that great city, the holy Jerusalem, that is to descend down from heaven with her bridegroom. Since Israel has an earthly destiny, this is Israel's city. Jerusalem and holy Jerusalem are different places. One is even called New Jerusalem, so as not to confuse the reader. Revelation 21 verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. A great and high mountain. Two possibilities are Matthew 4 verse 8 and Isaiah 14 verse 13. That great city, the holy Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem as the world has known throughout history, even in Solomon's day cannot compare to the glory that will be New Jerusalem. Revelation 21 verse 11, having the glory of God, 
and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. The glory of God, Acts 7 verse 55, Revelation 15 verse 8 and 21, 23. Her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Her light, means the city of New Jerusalem's light. Revelation 4 verse 3 and 21 colon 18 dash 19. Revelation 21 verses 12 to 13 and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. It is a Jewish city every way you look at it. Twelve is the number of Israel in the Bible. It is the city of the bride, the Lamb's wife. The word bride is only mentioned in the Bible fourteen times, and never in any of Paul's writings about the body of Christ. It is mentioned in reference to Israel though. A wall great and high, the wall is as tall as it is wide. Twelve gates, there are three gates on each wall. Twelve angels, there were three angels on each side stationed at each gate. The names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. These are written on each gate in the same order they appeared around the tabernacle in the wilderness. Revelation 21 verse 14 And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Matthew 10 verses 2 to 4 Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labias, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, Acts 1 verse 26, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Matthias replaced Judas, who betrayed Christ, and was numbered with the eleven, not Paul. Acts 1 verse 26, Paul was the apostle of Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13, Revelation 21 verses 15 to 17, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city leath four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. A golden reed, John was first given a reed in Revelation 11 verse 1, to measure the temple during the tribulation period. It was not a golden reed, like this one, it was like unto a rod, that was not God's temple that he would build, but a cheap replica, designed by men. Gold represents deity, and God is the maker of this city. The city leath four square, here we have the dimensions of the city that Christ has prepared for his bride, just as a Jewish man would do for his bride in preparing a place for her. So Jesus does here. Scriptures do not state that God has been preparing a place for us in the heavens for the last 2,000 years. God created the world in six days, not because it took him that long, but because he wanted to teach us about himself in the seven days of creation. God has had our place prepared for us for quite a while longer. 12,000 furlongs, 1,500 miles, and 140 and 4 cubits. A cubit is the length between a man's elbow and the tip of his middle finger. There is a correlation to the 144,000 Jewish, male, virgins found in Revelation 7 colon 4, and the city of New Jerusalem, which is 144,000 square cubits high, wide, and deep. The measure of a man, that refers to the measurement mentioned above. Revelation 21 verses 18 to 19, and the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, a chalcedony, the fourth, an emerald, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Revelation 21 verse 20, the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, a topaz, the tenth, a chrysoprasus, the eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Labias, Simon the Canaanite, and Matthias. Revelation 21 verse 21 And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Twelve pearls, oysters were considered unclean for Jews to eat, but the believing remnant is compared to a pearl of great price by Jesus in Matthew 13. They are the pearls in the midst of unclean oysters. This is symbolic of believing Jews amongst heathen idol-worshipping Gentiles. Notice the numbers 12 and 144,000 again used in this city, 
numbers always associated with Israel. These are the same colors in Israel's priestly garments. Revelation 21 verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And I saw no temple therein. John was saying that in eternity future when New Jerusalem comes down, there will not be a temple in it. A temple was necessary, because sins needed to be atoned for. There will be no more sin in eternity future. We do not have a temple today in the dispensation of grace, because the temple was for Israel, and our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. John 2 verse 21, and 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. The Jews had a temple on earth, and they will have one in the kingdom, which is described for us in Ezekiel 40. Revelation 21 verse 23, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. The city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon. Isaiah 24 verse 23. The Lamb is the light thereof, Jesus is the Lamb, and He is the light of the world. Genesis 1 verse 3. Revelation 21 verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, Isaiah 2 verse 5 and 60 colon 3. The kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. There will be a gathering of gifts for Christ by the nations of the earth as was the custom of the kings who were subject to a conquering king. Isaiah 66 verse 20. Jesus Christ is that king, and the world will come annually to recognize him as such once and for all. Revelation 21 verses 25 to 26. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. The gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. When sin is gone, there will be no need to lock your doors, or gates. Satan will not bother anyone ever again. Isaiah 60 verses 11 and 20, Therefore the gates shall be open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. The Gentiles will bring offerings to the Lord in Jerusalem. Isaiah 66 verse 20, And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses, and in chariots, and in litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Revelation 21 verse 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or mocketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or mocketh a lie, sin has been dealt with, and no sin will ever enter into this city. Satan will mount no more attacks ever again against God's creation. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, it will be the home of the Israel of God, the body of Christ. Our destiny in the body of Christ will be in heavenly places, while New Jerusalem will be on the earth. Paul names some kingdom saints who labored with him in the work whose names were in the book of life. Philippians 4 verse 3, chapter 22, a pure river of water of life. Revelation 22 verse 1, and he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. A pure river of water of life, this river water is a giver of life to those kingdom saints who partake of it, it is not for those in the body of Christ who already have eternal life. Ezekiel 47 verse 1 and Revelation 21 verse 6. Revelation 22 verse 2, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The tree of life, this tree is not on earth today, it is in heaven. It will be associated with the city of New Jerusalem after the 1,000-year kingdom has ended. Genesis 2 verse 9. It will be partaken of by all those saints from Adam unto the tribulation period, and the kingdom saints, but not by the body of Christ. Twelve manner of fruits. The tree of life has twelve manner of fruits on it, which is not a coincidence, because it is related to Israel and her program for the earth, one for each month. The leaves of the tree, the healing of the nations. These will heal people from all nations from the curse of sin. Revelation 22 verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. There shall be no more curse. The curse was a result of Adam's sin in the garden, when he partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That has been removed here by the second Adam and God is sitting on his throne along with his son, 
and the 144,000 are serving him in this city. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, be it is the city of New Jerusalem, and his servants shall serve him. In eternity future his servants in New Jerusalem will have work to do, just as members of the body of Christ will continue serving our Lord in heavenly places. Revelation 22 verse 4, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. His name shall be in their foreheads. Satan had his counterfeit of this with his mark of the number of his name in the foreheads of all that followed him. I am sure he will probably tell them that his mark is the mark spoken of here in verse 4 to deceive many at that time. Revelation 22 verse 5 And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. There shall be no night there, the light of the sun is not necessary to lighten New Jerusalem because God will supply the light with his glory. There will be no more night there, because God is light. We will still have a moon in the sky, but as for New Jerusalem, there shall never be night. Revelation 21 verse 23. Revelation 22 verse 6. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. These sayings are faithful and true. Jeremiah 42 verse 5, Revelation 3 14, 1911, and 21 colon 5. The Holy Prophets, the events of this book are to occur quickly. They are not drawn out over 2,000 years. Most of the events will happen in a seven-year period. His angel, Genesis 24 verse 7, Daniel 3 28, 6 22, Acts 12 verse 11, and Revelation 1 verse 1. His servants, the believing Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. They are also first mentioned in Revelation 1 verse 1. Revelation 1 verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. The things which must shortly be done, this is also mentioned in Revelation 1 verse 1. What begins in Revelation chapter 1, comes to its climax, here in this final chapter. Revelation 22 verse 7, Behold, I come quickly, Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Behold, I come quickly, Revelation 3 verse 11. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. This was said at the beginning of this book. Revelation 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. We in the body of Christ cannot keep the sayings of this book, because they are not for us but they are for those who find themselves in the tribulation period. Revelation 22 verse 8 And first John saw these things and heard them. And what I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which shewed me these things. I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel. This was a case of mistaken identity here because, Jesus was one of the angels slash messengers that had spoken to him. Revelation 22 verse 9 Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets. He was also a prophet during the time of the tribulation period, when there will be a need for prophets. John thought this messenger must be God because of all the things going on around him, and he was corrected so that we might know not to bow down before anything except God. Revelation 22 verse 10, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. This ending statement is in sharp contrast to Revelation 10 verses 4 to 11, where John was told to seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. John will reveal the seven thunders when Israel is going through the time of Jacob's trouble, or at the end of the millennial kingdom when Satan is loosed for a season. Do not believe someone if they tell you they know what the seven thunders utter. It is impossible to know today. The time is at hand. This is a comment for the spiritually discerned. It is for God's prophetic time clock that differs from ours. God speaks to Israel as if there was no church age, by just continuing on as if 2,000 years of church history never happened, while the Jew was blinded in part. Then he just starts right where he left off, without so much as a mention of the large gap in time. Revelation 22 verse 11 He that is unjust, let him be unjust still and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. See Luke 16 verse 10 and its context surrounding it in verses 1 to 13. When a person dies in faith, he is righteous, and he will remain as such, but when a lost person rejects Christ, he is unjust, and he will remain lost for all eternity. Revelation 22 verse 12 and, Behold, I come quickly, 
and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Behold, I come quickly, God is going to reward every believer based on his works for Christ. My reward is with me, the tribulation saints' rewards are laid up for them in heaven. So when Jesus comes back quickly, he brings their rewards back with him. According as his work shall be, it is talking about a reward for labor, not salvation. Revelation 22 verse 13 I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the end, it is easy to understand that there was nothing but God in the beginning, but what does it mean when he says he is also the end? This means that God created time, and he will do away with it, and that after all the small g gods are all forgotten, he alone will be the last and only God with a capital G. Isaiah 44 verse 6, Thus saith the Lord the King of Israel, and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Isaiah 48 verse 12, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Revelation 22 verse 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Blessed are they that do his commandments, those who do God's commandments in the tribulation period will have the right to eat of the tree of life and enter into New Jerusalem as part of an if, then, covenant. Those of us in the church today already have eternal life indwelling us, so we have no need to eat of the tree of life. This is the tribulation period, and not the church age. The Holy Spirit does not indwell believers during that period as he does today. If you force the doctrine of eternal security into the Old Testament, or the tribulation period, it will not fit, because it was never intended to. Eternal security is exclusively for us today. That they may have right to the tree of life, they could eat of the tree of life, because they did his commandments. Revelation 2 verse 7. We do not do anything today to receive eternal life today except believe the gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Only those who have done his commandments are able to enter through the gates into the city. Again, he is not speaking to us. Revelation 22 verse 15. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and mocketh a lie, without our dogs, without the city of New Jerusalem. Does this mean all the lost souls for all of eternity are outside the city walls of New Jerusalem? No, but you do not have to go far to find the entrance to hell, where the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. Revelation 14 verse 11. The Bible calls unbelievers, dogs. Psalm 22 verse 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Isaiah 56 verses 10 to 11, His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yeah, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand, they all look to their own way, every one for his gain, from his quarter. Matthew 7 verse 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Matthew 15 verse 26, But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread, and to cast it to dogs. Philippians 3 verse 2, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. Revelation 22 verses 16 to 17, I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Mine angel, see his angel in Revelation 1 verse 3, to testify unto you these things in the churches. The whole book is written to churches during the tribulation period that will endure these events. It is not written to the church, which is Christ's body. We will not be here for any of these things as we are not appointed unto wrath we will have been raptured prior to the start of the time of Jacob's trouble. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19, Quench not the Spirit. Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. I am the root and the offspring of David, a descendant of David, the bright and morning star, Numbers 2400 hours 17, I shall see him, but not now, I shall behold him, but not nigh, there shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph. Revelation 2 verse 28, And I will give him the morning star. The spirit and the bride say come, 
the Holy Spirit and the Bride, which are the inhabitants of the city, New Jerusalem. John says the same thing to two different groups, let him that hear us say, come, this is a plea by kingdom believers, for the kingdom to come, Matthew 6 verse 10, and let him that is a thirst come, God is still speaking to the seven churches from chapters 2 and 3 which should tell you that the whole book is written to them, not just the first three chapters, the water of life, the tribulation saints will need to partake of the water of life as well. It is the Spirit and the Bride which are inviting these tribulation saints, who are not sealed by the Spirit, to partake of the water of life, as well as the tree of life. Revelation 22 verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. By adding to the words of the prophecy of this book, a person in the tribulation period will invoke the very punishments proclaimed for the unbelievers. You can't you have the plagues added to you unless you are going through the tribulation period? God's word was added to by even the garden. Revelation 22 verse 19 And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. If someone in the tribulation period believes that Jesus was the Christ, but he perverts the prophecies of this book, he will have his part in the book of life taken away. And out of the holy city, the holy city New Jerusalem is prepared for his Jewish bride, not the body of Christ. And from the things which are written in this book, this is referring to the promises made to the overcomers in the book of the Revelation. This is not doctrine for us in the dispensation of grace. It is for Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Revelation 22 verses 20 to 21, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely, I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Surely, I come quickly. Amen. Six times in this final book of the Bible, Jesus tells Israel, that he is coming quickly. The first two are in Revelation 2 verse 5, and 16, where he says, Repent, or else I will return quickly. The next three times he says, Behold, I come quickly, before saying, Surely I come quickly. John, after the two initial warnings, says, Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even though all this must come to pass, come, Lord Jesus.